Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to start a baseball blog. So be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell if this video or any other video on this channel helps you out. So basically what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you and tell you exactly what a baseball blog is with a few examples. I'm going to show you how to pick a niche and believe me there are several niches within baseball and then how to niche down so that you can start getting traffic and then what web hosting is and why you need it for your new baseball blog and then how to get a free domain name. After that we are going to talk about installing WordPress and what WordPress is, how to install a WordPress theme and important changes that you absolutely have to make in order to start getting traffic leads and potentially sales if you want to make money. After that, we're going to talk about how to start writing so that you can write as fast as possible. After that, we are going to talk about some ways that you can make money, why you need to share your content on social media in the very beginning, and then about how many blog posts you should write before you decide if your website's a success or failure. Now, be sure to check out the first three links in the description because I will be referencing those three links throughout this video. All right, so first things first, what is a baseball blog? A baseball blog is simply a website that you're going to create content to answer questions. People from around the world are going to be asking questions about baseball, whether it's the MLB, it's minor league, it's high school, it's instruction, training, whatever it may be. People are coming to the internet because they have questions and you are going to create content to solve that those questions. So let's go ahead and look at some examples of a baseball blog. Now, one of the biggest examples out there is simply the MLB trade rumors blog. Now, as the name implies, it's all about MLB trades and rumors. This is a pretty popular blog simply because there are millions of people around the world that are interested in potential trades. If you look at this, we can tell that the niche is the MLB and trade rumor. So this has done a very good job. This website has done a very good job of niching down. Not only are they just talking about the MLB, they're also talking about trade rumors. Now I'm going to show you with a keyword research tool here in just a second, why it's important to niche down. So let's go ahead and take a look at some niche ideas. All right. So here I am in Ahrefs. It's a paid tool that I use to help me find different keywords and niche ideas. What we're going to do is we're just going to type in MLB. MLB obviously stands for Major League Baseball. On a scale of 1 to 100, the keyword MLB is super hard. It's a 91 out of 100. If we type in MLB trade, if we type in MLB trade here, you're going to see it's 62. So there is lots of opportunity just by adding in trade. We niche down from MLB down to trade and you can see there's some opportunity. That's why this blog works so well. And then when I type in rumors, it does go up to super hard, but you can see there's opportunity here nonetheless. And what you need to do when you're first getting started with your blog, because you have a very small no domain authority blog is you're going to need to a decide on your niche. Are you going to talk about the MLB? Are you going to talk about training, like how to throw a curveball, things like that? Or are you going to, are you going to focus on different aspects? Maybe the rules of the game, whatever it is, you need to find a way to niche down. For example, if we just type in baseball here, we type in baseball, hit enter. You can see it's super difficult. If we look at the matching terms, so these are words that have or include the word baseball, you can see there's a lot of red and yellow and orange. That basically means it's going to be kind of difficult for you to start gaining traffic, leads and sales if you start talking about these general terms. But you can see there's some opportunity. If you talked about maybe Iowa State University baseball, that could be an opportunity. It gets 72,000 searches per month. So I'm just going to copy this. And this is a, a good opportunity. You could talk about uh, minor league baseball teams in your area. Uh, for example, here we have the Kingfish. You could create content about the Kingfish. Look at this, 157,000 searches per month. 7,000 over 7,000 keywords and you could create content about ISU baseball. Now, again, you want to make sure that you are aware of trademark terms and all that stuff so that you don't you know, run into any legal troubles, but you can see this, there is some opportunity. Maybe you could type in, let's see, we'll do how to baseball, how to baseball. We're going to hit enter here and we're going to see how difficult this is. Now, as you can see, how to wash a baseball cap, how to how to clean a baseball cap. There's all sorts of things in here, but 
there is a lot of opportunities. 84,000 monthly searches, 30,000 keywords. You could go and find something revolving baseball and create content and start getting leads and sales. This could be a good opportunity if you are in the baseball niche. Now, what you want to do is you want to try and build domain authority. Once you start building some domain authority, you can niche up and talk about some of those more competitive key terms. For example, you could start off writing about how to wear a baseball cap. That's only an eight as far as difficulty or how to clean a baseball cap or something like that. And then once your domain authority is like 50 or 60, you can start writing about the MLB. That is a good way to kind of borrow some, some domain authority and actually start making some money. All right. So first things first, we talked about how to pick a niche and niche down. Now we need to talk about web hosting. What is web hosting and why is it so important? Now, in order to have a website, your website is a collection of files. And what you're going to do is you're going to work with a web hosting provider, the first link in the description, and you are going to rent hard drive space so that you can have a website that people from around the world can see. They call their hard drive a server. It's the same thing. But in order for your website to get seen by people in Japan and Croatia and Venezuela, you need to have it hosted somewhere. And the first link in the description, they're actually gonna help you do that. And if you get started with that first link in the description, you will get a free domain name for the first year. And a domain name is simply the name of the website. For example, the domain name here is mlbtraderumors.com. And that's how people will refer to your website, mlbtraderumors.com. You'll get a free domain if you click the first link in the description. Now I'm actually gonna walk you through step-by-step -step going through the process of signing up with Bluehost getting a domain name and getting web hosting. It's a really easy process that you can complete in less than six minutes. So right now I'm gonna show you how to do that step by step. When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click get started. What I recommend is to click the first one on the far left, the basic plan if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click select, and then move on. Here you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. What I recommend is try and find a domain name that's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're gonna get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now make sure again, you wanna pick one that's related to your niche. Click next, and then you're gonna see a green box that says that it's approved. The next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information. Make sure that you, when you scroll down here, make sure that you leave all of the settings on. Um, but Again, enter in your contact information, the settings right here where it says domain privacy, leave all of this checked. If you don't leave it checked, you're gonna get people reaching out to you, uh, spamming you, emailing you, trying to get you to sign up for web hosting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once I sign on and move to the next step. All right, so I have signed up and I'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially. Just create a simple username and password, make sure it meets the requirements there and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. Write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're gonna have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do wanna note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time and you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're gonna move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you and it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all and I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is gonna do a little bit of work in the background for you and we're just gonna actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on, start a blog but for the next step just click skip because we know what we're doing and i'm actually going to tell you what to do so that we can get up and running click get started right here on the left hand side and then move on just click skip here and click skip here and then just pick the first one in the far left make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you they have both free and premium themes which i'll talk about in just a moment so right now it's actually creating your wordpress website in just a few moments, you're gonna click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there. You'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right, so we click log in and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work, but 
now we have our website, as you can see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna log in and delete a few plugins because right now it has the coming soon. And so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's gonna say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like, but for everyone else outside of your network, it's gonna say coming soon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but um, plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um, other plugins that are already activated. And then we can go through and make the necessary changes, which I'll cover in just a moment. So we're gonna deactivate them and then delete them. Now you wanna make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website. The more plugins you have, the slower your website's going to respond and, and function, and you're gonna lose out on ranking. So make sure you have a lean setup, very few plugins, and then move on. As you can see right now, I'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need. Uh, if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're gonna talk about in just a moment as well as getting writing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them. And then we're actually gonna start moving on to settings, which you see right here. All right, so let's go ahead and make some changes that we absolutely have to make so that you can start getting traffic. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna change your site title. Your site title is going to be the title of your website. You can make this basically your domain name. For example, my domain name is Web Hosting Rewind, and you can see that's my site title. And then the tagline is, basically what your website's all about in a very succinct manner. As you can see here, mine says, get the latest news and info on all things web hosting. What you wanna do is make sure that yours is relevant to your niche. For example, if you are creating content about makeup, you can say, come here for the latest tips and tricks for all things makeup. Next, you wanna make sure that your WordPress address is HTTPS and not HTTP. Make sure your site address is HTTPS as well. And then the administration email should automatically be set. Um, uncheck the membership so that anyone can register. Make sure that this is unchecked. Um, if we scroll down here, you wanna change your time zone to your time zone. There are all sorts of them here. Next, you wanna make sure that you have your date format set to the way you want, and then go ahead and click save. If we go down to writing, there isn't anything in writing that we need to change. After that, we're gonna to go to reading. In reading, very important, you wanna make sure that your homepage displays to your latest post. That's the first thing. And the second one is you wanna make sure that your search engine visibility is unchecked. Do not check this. Discourage search engines from indexing the site. You do not want this. Because if this is checked, people aren't going to be able to find your website and everything that we do after this is going to be a waste. So go ahead and click save. This should be unchecked. Next, if we go down to discussion, there really isn't anything that we need to change here. Media, we can leave this as is, and then permalinks is going to be really important. Right now, your permalinks are set to plain. You wanna change it to post name. This is done for search engine optimization. What's gonna happen is when we create a new blog post, we are going to make it so that it's search engine optimized. We're gonna use the keyword in our title, and that keyword is gonna show up right here as well. And this is called search engine optimization. Make sure that it's set to post name and then go ahead and click save. And really that's everything that you need to do to make sure that you start getting traffic. All right, so now that we've installed WordPress, I explained a little bit about what, per, what WordPress is. We've installed a free WordPress theme. We're gonna go back and get a premium theme. I'm gonna explain that in just a moment. We've made the important changes that you have to make so that you can start getting traction. Now, let me talk a little bit more about a WordPress theme. Right now you have a basic WordPress theme on your website and it's okay, but what I recommend is that you go out and get a premium WordPress theme. Now, a WordPress theme is simply going to change the look and feel of your website. This is probably a WordPress theme that is designed to be uh, friendly towards baseball and the MLB. And you can get premium WordPress themes by clicking the second link in the description. When you click that second link, you're gonna be taken to this website here. And what you can do is you can just type in baseball, hit enter, and you're gonna see there are a bunch of themes that you can download. Now, these themes range in price from as low as $20 this one right here is $15 to as high as $99. Now, again, you can get started with a free theme, but I recommend that if you're going to get a premium theme, 
and the benefit of a premium theme is it comes with additional features. One feature that could be included is a countdown timer to the next game. So let's say you are creating a, a blog about the Chicago White Sox. You could create an uh, automatic countdown timer that comes down to the next game for the Chicago White Sox. How cool is that? And that could be included in a theme that you find. And so that's one of the benefits of getting a premium theme. There, there are additional features. It looks better. So what you're going to do is find a theme that you like. You are going to push this button to add it to your cart. Once you add it to your cart, you are going to buy the theme. When you buy the theme, you're going to download a zip file. You're going to unpack that zip file, and there's going to be a second zip file. When you get to that second zip file, you're actually going to install it into your WordPress dashboard. So here we are. I'm just going to go back here to my WordPress dashboard. And what we are going to do is we are going to go to Appearance. We're going to click on Themes, and then we are going to click on Add New Theme. When you click on add new theme, you are going to click on upload theme. And then you can either drag and drop that second zip file that I just referenced, or you can click choose file here. Whichever way you decide, click on install now and then activate it. And then you have a brand new WordPress theme installed on your back office. So now that we have that taken care of, the next step is really to start writing. Now I get three primary questions when it comes to starting a blog. The first one is how long should my blog post be? The second one is how do I start writing? And the third one, which I'll cover in just a moment, is how many blog posts should I upload? So let's go ahead and take care of those first two. Now to start a blog or to start a blog post, you are going to hover over posts, click on all posts, and then click on add new. And what we're going to do is we are going to take the keywords that we found in the previous step. So how to wash a baseball cap, for example, let's do how to draw a bait. No, let's do how to wash a baseball cap. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here at the heading of our blog post. Okay. And the reason why we're doing this is to optimize our blog posts for search. It's called search engine optimization. What will happen is once we submit this blog post, our web page, our blog post page is going to be webhostingrewind.com forward slash how to wash a baseball cap. This helps us get discovered in search. And so what we're going to do is we are going to, before we start writing, we're actually going to brainstorm. And the easiest way to brainstorm is simply a little method that we learned in elementary or middle school. We're going to do who, what, when, where, why, and how. And so what I'll do is I'll create a bullet point for each one of these. And then I'm going to go through and start writing. And basically, I'm going to just ask myself questions with regard to the keyword research or the, the keyword term that we found earlier. So if my keyword research term is how to wash a baseball cap, let's say uh, we could do when should you wash a baseball cap? Um, why should you wash? A baseball cap why should you wash a baseball cap um, and then of course how is going to be how to wash um, what what um, what detergents do you need can you use soap these are all questions that we're going to ask ourselves in this brainstorming session and the reason why I like to do it this way is it actually gives me some ideas on, on, on writing out this blog post, it actually helps me write longer and it helps me answer the question more fully. And that leads me to my second question. People often ask, how long should my blog post be? And I believe that it really all depends on the question and it depends on your competitors. Now, in my opinion, your blog post should only be as long as it needs to be. If your if you can answer the question in 1,000 words, that's how long your blog post should be. There's no benefit. You don't get extra credit for writing a 10,000 word ebook on how to wash a baseball cap if you can answer the question in 500 words. And to, let's just take a look and see what our competitors are doing. What I did was how to wash a baseball cap. And another pro tip, what you could do is you could actually use some of these questions here that popped up automatically and you could add them right into your blog post. So how to wash a baseball cap in the washer how to wash your baseball cap in the dishwasher. You can add these to your blog post and that's gonna help you write a little bit better. It's gonna answer the question more thoroughly and you can actually rank higher. So what we've done here is I just typed in how to wash a baseball cap. I am going to open this and I'm just gonna count the words. Let's see how many words that we have over on Whirlpool. This is probably about a 900 word blog post. If I just copy this, I'm gonna scroll all the way down and let's see. 
This is a 638 word blog post. Now, what we could do is we could write probably a 1000 or 1200 word blog post where we're answering the questions here directly about washing a baseball cap and then some of the, the other questions that we found by clicking here. So we could answer, make it a 1200 word blog post and actually rank for multiple keywords. So this is a pretty good opportunity if you were to uh, take advantage of it. So that is how long a blog post should be. It's a long way of saying that it really depends on your competition and it depends on the keyword. So now that we have that taken care of, we started writing. What we do need to do is once we write our blog post out, go ahead and click publish. And when you click publish, it's going to be available for the entire world to read and react. So let's go over to the next step, which is to figure out ways to make money. There are a number of ways to make money with your website. One of the ways to make money is simply to have ads placed right on your website. Now, if we look at this website here, the MLBTradeRumors.com, this right here is an ad. This down here is an ad. And at the very bottom is an ad. And the way that the ads work is that this company, this website can make money when someone views an ad for a certain length of time or clicks on an ad and goes over to the other web page, a click through is what it's called. And there are tons of ad networks out there, but in the very beginning, you're probably only going to be able to work with AdSense, Google AdSense. And the reason being is you don't have any traffic. Some of the other ad networks out there, like Ezoic, AdThrive, Mediavine, they require that you have 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 page views. You can get started with AdSense with almost no traffic at all. Just know that you're not going to make very much money. You're probably going to make pennies on the dollar until you start getting those higher metrics. And when you get those higher metrics, you can move on to those other uh, ad networks that I mentioned. But that's just one way. And, you know, this is going to be a kind of a slow trickle. One way that you can make money immediately is simply with affiliate marketing. Now, affiliate marketing is simply recommending or selling other people's products and services. The way that affiliate marketing works is if a person sees your affiliate link, they click on the link and they buy the product, you get paid a commission. So you get paid a percent of the overall sell. There are tons of affiliate programs out there. Amazon is probably the largest one, but what you can do is you can just go out and search different affiliate programs. Now, one thing that you could do is you could, you could change the affiliate products based on your uh, blog posts. For example, how to wash a baseball cap. You could be an affiliate for laundry detergent through through Amazon, you could be an affiliate for a dishwasher or you know, maybe laundry detergent, as I mentioned, or even a washer dryer. There is literally thousands of affiliate programs out there that you can apply to and you can make money. Now, if you wanna learn more about affiliate marketing, check out the third link in the description. That third link actually leads to a free training where you'll learn how to get started with affiliate marketing step-by-step. Step. After affiliate marketing, you can sell your own digital or physical products. One of the cool things with selling a digital product is you keep all of the money. Affiliate marketing, you only keep a percent. With digital products, you keep all of the money. Now with this website, maybe they have a 10,000 page book with all of the trades. So like a trade history book that they could sell directly on their website. This is a good way to make money and you can do it too, as long as it's related. For you, maybe you could sell a, a baseball instructional course, an online course where people learn different skills with regard to baseball. The key is when with affiliate marketing and selling digital products is that you have to sell something that is congruent or in line with the audience. For example, with MLB trade rumors, it would not make sense for them to try and sell NHL stuff here because no one's going to be interested if they are coming here for MLB transactions. So if we go back over to our slide deck. Now, when you first get started, you aren't going to get any traffic from Google. Google doesn't trust your site and they have to take time to compare your content to more established sites. So in the beginning, I recommend that you share your content on social media. That can be Reddit, that can be Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Pinterest, you name it, you can share it there. And I recommend that you find, again, groups that are going to be interested in your content. Don't just share it on Reddit, share it on the MLB subreddit if your website was the MLB rumors. Um, that's going to be vitally important to getting traffic. Don't just share it on Facebook, share it in groups that are going to be interested in the content. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is share it on Facebook and, and nobody in your friends and family don't look at it and then you get frustrated because no one's looking at it, but your friends and family, for the most part, aren't going to be interested in your content. But the people in a baseball Facebook group are gonna be very interested. After that, 
The third question that I mentioned earlier is how many blog posts should I write before I determine if my website's a success or failure? In my opinion, I think you should write 50 blog posts before you take a step back and think about success or failure. Now, 50 seems like a lot, but in reality, it's not that much. The reason why I think 50 is a good number is it gives Google a lot of content. It shows Google that you're serious about writing and you're actually going to get better at writing. In the very beginning, unless you have a journalism background, you're probably not very good at writing. And the more opportunities that you can write within your niche, the more you're going to learn about your niche, the better keyword research you're going to do, and the better writer that you become. And for those reasons, I think you should write every day for 50 days or every other day for 100 days until you get 50 blog posts up, and then you can take a step back and realize. So now that we've covered all of those steps, make sure you check out the three links in the description. The first one is to get started with web hosting. The second one is to get started with a premium WordPress theme. And the third one is for a free affiliate marketing course. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell if this video helped you out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.